Welcome to this video. In the previous lecture, we had seen how to determine the operating point of a BJT. This was a circuit that we had used, and we got the operating point at the point of intersection of DC load line and output characteristics of the transistor, as shown here. Q is the operating point. Here, if you keep VCC, the source voltage VCC, and uh, resistance RC constant then these two points will be fixed VCC by RC and VCC so DC load line will be fixed there is only one DC load line if these two parameters are constants so this line will be unique but the output characteristics of the transistor depends upon the value of IB that you are using so if I decrease the value of base current I will get another output characteristics so the point of intersection will uh, the point of intersection will move uh, to another point it will change if i increase the value of base current output characteristics will intersect the dc load line at another point so the operating point will change so so the operating point depends on the value of base current that uh, you are using so which of these operating points is useful for an amplifier operation is what we are going to discuss so base current may vary based on the variation in vbb or rb and and when we are using this as an amplifier in addition to uh, the elements shown here there will be an ac signal source okay here we have shown only dc sources and these dc sources are used to forward bias the base emitter junction and the reverse bias the collector base junction now suppose i have a ac signal and i want to amplify that signal then that particular signal can be coupled to the base of the transistor as shown here okay so here i have connected an ac signal source to the base of this transistor through a coupling capacitor so the function of this coupling capacitor is to prevent any dc current from entering into this ac source so the dc current ib coming from the battery vbb will be flowing into the base of the transistor it will not enter the ac source and this ac source will be delivering a ac current small ib I subscript small b so that current will be coming from this AC source and by Kirchhoff's current law you can see that the sum of these two currents capital IB plus small IB will be the net base current suppose the uh, capital IB value DC base current is 30 microampere and the AC signal source is a 20 uh, sine wave with peak value 20 microampere then the net base current will be something like this so i have a dc ib value 30 microampere coming from the battery and an ac signal current that is uh, of peak 20 microampere as shown here is coming from the ac signal source and when you add these two you will get a uh, sinusoidal current with average value 30 microampere and the positive uh, and the maximum value um, is 50 microampere and minimum value is 10 microampere okay it will be something like this so this is the effective base current flowing through the uh, transistor base terminal so the base current now the base current is not constant it is taking values from say 30 microampere then say 40 microampere 50 microampere again it decreases to 40 30 like that it takes different values so based on the change in base current the output characteristics of uh, the point of intersection between the DC load line and output characteristics will change. So I have shown it in the next diagram. So here you can see, suppose this is Q1 corresponds to IB equal to 30 microampere. Q1 is the operating point when IB is 30 microampere. This is our DC load line. So when the base current increases from so th uh, this is now the base current is now something like this this mean value is 30 microampere 
and then it goes up to 50 microampere then the minimum value is 10 microampere okay so from 30 it will go to when it reaches 50 microampere the output characteristics will be here this one so the point of intersection moves to q4 when ib is 50 microampere suppose this is the output characteristics then the operating point goes to q5 so from q1 it moved to q4 then to q5 then output uh, then the base current is decreasing from 50 it reaches uh, 40 then 30 then it goes to 20 10 like that so when it decreases from 50 uh, operating point will move from q5 to q4 then it will come back to q1 from q1 it decreases to say ib equal to 20 microampere then it goes to q2 then from when ib reaches 10 microampere operating point will reach q3 then it will again move up so like this operating point will move along this dc load line depending on the base current value so there are different operating points possible so the initial we have to fix the initial operating point q1 then from there it will vary based on the signal current so where to fix this q1 is uh, is the question so uh, i can classify the possible operating points into three uh, my first, uh, initial operating point could be in the middle of the active region or it can be somewhere near cutoff i can fix operating point somewhere here this is our uh, suppose this is I, uh, corresponding to ib equal to zero microampere then this portion is our cutoff region this is our cutoff region so if i fix the operating point somewhere here then that operating point can be termed as uh, an operating point near cutoff region and this is our saturation region so if i fix operating point initial operating point somewhere here uh, near q5 or q6 then uh, it is near saturation region so which one is good for faithful amplification of the ac signal that is what we are going to see okay so there are three possibilities either i can uh, fix the uh, operating point that middle of the active region or it can be some on the two extents either at near cutoff or near saturation so we will see the three possibilities one by one so here i have redrawn the output characteristics and the dc load line these are the output characteristics for different iv values from say 0 microampere to 60 microampere and suppose our initial base current was 30 microampere so initially the operating point is a as shown here so it is in the middle of the active region now suppose my base current is uh, we know that the base current is an ac signal so it will change it will uh, i will uh, draw the base current initially here base current is of this shape So the average value is 30 microampere, then it goes to 50, and in the minimum range it is 10 microampere. So I can uh, position this waveform here for showing the variations in operating point. So I will redraw this IB curve. So this is I will call it as I subscript capital B to show that it is the sum of capital IB and the small IB. Okay, so the base current will be varying like this. So initially it is here, then it moves to this point. Okay, the initially it is here, then it moves to this, then it moves to the peak value, then it decreases, decreases, and it reaches the minimum value, then it comes back to 30 microamper like that. So you can see that the operating point will shift from A to this upper point, this point. Then it will shift to this one. Then when the waveform current decreases, it will come back, it will move down the line here, then it will reach A. Then when it decreases below 30 microampere, it will go to this point, then this point, like that. So the operating point will move um, 
first it will move up in the upward direction then it will come back to a then it will go downwards then it will come back to a so like that operating point will change so when initially the operating point is at a what is the collector current so i can plot the collector current here this axis is collector current so initially we will show the time variation of collector current here so initially collector current is having some value here when it is at a this this value this is the magnitude of collector current corresponds to uh, point a when it moves to this point collector current increases to this value so it reaches somewhere here time increases so it reaches this value when operating point reaches this upper point collector current again increases to here then it decreases okay like that so when when the operating point completes one full cycle of variation it will come back to this 30 uh, this level i i see corresponding to base current of 30 mega so so you will get a sinusoidal variation of this is actually a sine wave variation my drawing is not that good so this will come back to 30 uh, this particular level this so this is our effective collector current i subscript capital c so for a sinusoidal variation in base current you will get a sinusoidal variation in collector current and actually this is an amplified current signal because ic is in milliampere range as we have already seen this is only in microampere range even though it looks bigger this is only in microampere range this is in milliampere so you get got some amplification similarly you can plot the output voltage variation also by plotting this uh, extending this to the x-axis so initially uh, so this will be the time variation time axis is here initially the uh, corresponding to point a this is the collector to emitter voltage then initially the point is moving upwards so collector to emitter voltage is decreasing in this fashion it is moving to this point so collector to emitter voltage is this so it will decrease to this point then it is coming back to a so it will come back to this level then again okay it will trace a uh, shape like this so vce will also be a sinusoidal wave with this shape but you can see that there is a 180 degree phase shift for the positive half cycle of the input signal the output voltage vce is having a negative variation there is a negative cycle variation in output output voltage vc so there is a 180 degree phase shift in the uh, output voltage signal with respect to the input current waveform in common emitter configuration okay so so we are getting a faithful amplified version of ib in on the output side so q point uh, if the q point is fixed at the middle of the active region uh, the signal variation uh, we are getting faithful amplification now let us consider the uh, case when the operating point initial operating point is near cutoff so suppose the initial base current dc base current without any signal is 10 microampere so i have drawn the output characteristic corresponding to 10 microampere here okay this one and this is the dc load line so the point of intersection of dc load line and the output characteristic for 10 microampere is this point b so the operating point is b and you can see that it is close to the cutoff region cutoff region is this hashed portion below ib equal to 0 microampere so when i apply an input signal with this operating point what happens during the positive half cycle of the input signal base current increases so when base current increases the operating point will move upwards along the dc load line so during this portion you can see that during the entire positive half cycle of the input signal operating point is always in the active region so the output in the collector current will be an amplified version of the um, input base current so there is no issue in the positive half cycle but during the negative half cycle of the input signal base current decreases so the operating point will move downwards below point b along the dc load line and after some level the you can see that it goes below the cutoff region below this ib equal to zero microampere boundary it will go into the cutoff region okay it will go, go into cutoff region so transistor will turn off so uh, the transistor cannot faithfully amplify this portion the 
of the input signal so there is a clipping in the negative half cycle of the output collector current similar uh, with similar explanation you can see that collector to emitter voltage in collector to emitter voltage there is no problem in the negative half cycle since the operating point is always in the active region uh, when the during the positive half cycle of the input signal but when the operating point moves below point b somewhere uh, the at this point transistor goes into cutoff so there is a clipping in the positive half cycle of collector to emitter voltage so uh, in short the transistor cannot faithfully amplify the input signal if the initial operating point is near cutoff okay so now we can analyze the next condition that is when the operating point is near saturation region so i have drawn um, the condition for that when the operating point is near saturation region the uh, base current is having a high value say 50 microampere so the output characteristic corresponding to 50 microampere is this and the dc load line is shown here so the operating point is point c this one so what happens when the operating point is point c this during the positive half cycle of the input signal after certain level you can see that when the base current exceeds some value this operating point may go into deep into the saturation region so there is a clipping in the positive half cycle of the collector current but during the negative half cycle of the input signal the operating point is always in this region in active region so there is no issue in the negative half cycle but during positive half cycle transistor may go into saturation so uh, there is a clipping similarly during negative half cycle of collector to emitter voltage there is a clipping here these two there is a 180 degree shift between these two that we have already explained so that is why there is a clipping on the positive half cycle of ic and negative half cycle of vc so in conclusion uh, operating point should be in the middle of the active region for faithful amplification in the other two possibilities near cutoff and near saturation operating point may uh, it will lead to uh, distortion in the output some portion of the output will be clip, uh, clipped okay so it, it uh, for faithful amplification we need to bias the operating point or place the operating point in the middle of the active region okay so thank you we will continue in the next class